Kia ora, folks, it's Wednesday. Let's talk about AC electricity. Now this is compared to DC electricity, which means direct current. So AC means alternating current. And whereas in a DC circuit, the current is going to leave the positive terminal, go through some load, and return to the negative terminal. Join those up. The current will go in this direction, and then we'll return through the load in this direction. So for an AC circuit, looks a little bit different. We're going to have some current going this way, but then the current's going to alternate. And when it alternates, well, the current's going to move in the other direction. And for an alternating current, well, this one here, that's specifically, re specifically reserved for a DC. For an alternating source, what we're going to do, let's erase that. We're going to do a little sine wave here, or a cosine wave, a trig function, and pop it in to our circuit like that. In my picture here, I've got a steam turbine generator. And what this is doing is generating alternating current electricity. And so we can see sort of the nature of this. We've got some cylindrical elements here. Um, and we've got a shaft that's going to go all the way down the center line here of this giant device. Uh, and then you can see how big it is, right, based on the scale of our turbine dude here. And so I'll be looking at a few pictures of these uh, just to give us some motivation about generating AC electricity. Now before AC came along, uh, there was DC. So in this photo we see Edison with his dynamo, and a dynamo is basically just a DC generator. So that's going to generate uh, DC current. And this patent is from 1879, and this photo is from a little bit later here. And actually, by the time the photo was taken, this must be at some sort of museum or something. We've got a commemorative plaque here of uh, Edison and his first dynamo. So there was a battle between Edison and one of his contemporaries, Nikola Tesla. And this took place in about the 1870s and 1880s. So in 1887, Tesla came up with a competing system to Edison. So Edison's was this DC system, and he envisioned a whole DC network. So you generate power, and then all the customers consume direct current power. But there was a problem with this which was that you cannot transmit DC power very long distances. This is called line, lath, line loss, and we'll look at this in a second. Now, the way around this was figured out by this guy, Nikola Tesla. I, lo I love this photo of him. This is just from Wikipedia, and somebody, whoever updated Wikipedia, has given some nice alt text here, a slender mustachioed man with a thin face and a pointed chin, but he's got kind of this smoldering intensity to his look, at, le at least in this photo of him. Uh, now, Tesla was a hell of an electrical engineer, and he came up with the Tesla motor, 1887, and to go with his AC system, he also came up with the transformer. And the transformer is really one of the all-time greatest discoveries uh, that all of us use today as we consume electricity in our homes. That electricity has been transformed at some point along the way, often multiple times. Now, transformers will be a future topic that we will cover. So here's another picture of a steam turbine generator. You can get an idea for the scale. You can see some safety fences here uh, for people, and then just the massive size of these turbine areas here. So the steam turbine generator is going to take steam, and steam is just hot water really, right? It turns into water vapor, and it has an incredible amount of energy in it, and you can use that steam. You can guide it, you can pump it, 
and then you can use that steam to push against a turbine blade. When the steam pushes against the blade, the blade will rotate. And now the electrical part is that if you put a conductor and you rotate it inside of a magnetic field, then you can induce electricity. So there's a lot to unpack here and we'll be covering it both in the next session on electromagnetic induction and after that on motors and generators. So here's a CAD model of a steam turbine generator. So what happens is the steam is coming in here and so this is the first stage and the first stage is always the highest pressure. So this is going to be the high pressure. So you heat up the steam and in some cases you heat it up to like 600 degrees so it's much much hotter than ordinary steam that you would create at home when you're cooking. You pass it through the high pressure stage and you know it's high pressure because there are little teeth on the turbine blades in here and they're really tiny and really close together. If you ever look at uh, turbines inside of a jet engine uh, you'll get a really good idea of how tiny these teeth are. And then it progresses. So after the first stage, the steam loses some energy by rotating the shaft. And then we have here an intermediate stage. Uh, and then we progress along even further. And when we have the large turbines, we're at the third or the low pressure stage. Now the whole point of going to all this trouble to get steam to rotate a shaft is so that down this end what we're going to do is we're going to connect a generator and create an EMF. So we can attach a generator to that rotating shaft, generate some electricity. Now you can rotate that shaft however you want. Steam happens to be uh, one of the, the easiest ways that we have to do this. Uh, monkeys on bicycles can do the same thing. They can generate um, electrical current. This photo is the state of the art of these steam turbine generators and this one's taken from the other side, so a different perspective. In the middle here we can see the massive low pressure turbines and then going the other way we would have the intermediate and the high pressure down this end and then in the foreground you can really see the scale here of this which is the DC generator. And this equipment, incredibly huge, but it can produce 600 megawatts of power, uh, which would be quite enough, you know, for a large proportion of Germans to consume.